at an uh, extremely exciting time in the life of our church as we are asking this question, what's next? What's next for our church here? Uh, who is God calling us to be in, uh, in this next season of Brackenridge Baptist Church? And as Dave has already said, uh, if you missed out on last week's uh, message, I really do encourage you to go back and, uh, and find that online. Uh, that re- uh, is, is important to, to understand where we are uh, right now uh, in this moment, uh, uh, looking to, to what we're going to be speaking about here today. Uh, now, what we are doing over these, uh, these three weeks, um, we're having more of a, uh, a session of uh, a series of family talks rather than uh, sermons in theological depth. Um, so this is where we're coming together as a family and, uh, and having a discussion um, about, uh, about what it means to be our family here uh, in the church. Uh, now, if you are here for the first time, uh, this is still a, an, an exciting thing for you to be a part of as well. You are so welcome to be a part of this journey that we are in right now as a community here. Uh, because what we have sensed God is doing at the moment in, uh, in this church is that God is calling us into a new season together. That God is calling us into a time of fresh vision for His church here at, uh, at Brackenridge Baptist Church. And, uh, and last week when we began our series, we saw that it was, uh, in fact, it's God who gives great vision to His church. This is not something that comes through human means, but it is God who is the God of great vision. All through Scripture, we see prophecies and dreams and, and visions that His people have uh, where, where God is telling them, this is what I am calling into, this is who I am calling you to be for the future. Now, if it is God who gives vision to his people if it is the one if god is the one who speaks to his people and calls them where to go then we need to believe that it is uh that it is great vision that he gives to his people because he is god he is the almighty he's the creator of all things the god of great vision and when god gives uh vision he calls his people into even greater things than they have planned for themselves last week we began speaking uh, about this um, and looking at this through the life of, of, uh, of Abram and uh, this guy Abram who had been going about his, his way for 75 years of his life, uh, suddenly God spoke to him and told him that he was going to uh, be the father of a great nation and that through his descendants all nations on earth would be blessed and the fulfilment of that ultimately came through, through Christ. Now, God just didn't give Abram great, uh, great vision for, for what he was calling him into, but God was also the one who provided for his people. And that's something that can reassure every single one of us. When God calls us into things that are greater than we had planned for ourselves, it is God. He is the one who provides for his people. And then our response, if God is calling us into something as his people... It is our job to respond with faith. Abram, he is the perfect example of this, often called the father of faith throughout Scripture. He is someone who, even though he wasn't given huge amounts of clarity around God, where God was calling him into, he stepped out into, into what he knew God was, was calling him to do. Now, this, uh, this covenant that was made uh, between God and Abram, this promise that was made between God and Abram, uh, continues to unfold through, through Scripture. And Abram, he does begin to have uh, a huge amount of descendants, and they, they become the nation of Israel. The nation of Israel is eventually uh, enslaved in captivity by the Egyptians, um, then God rises up Moses, who leads his people and frees them out of the captivity of the, uh, of the Egyptians. Following, um, following being uh, set free from, uh, from Egyptian captivity, um, a few months later, the Israelites, they uh, ended up finding themselves in, uh, in the Sinai Desert. Particularly, they came up to Mount Sinai. And when we get to this point, when the Israelites get to Mount Sinai, there is a, another covenant that is made. There is another promise, another vision that is, uh, that is made between God and his, 
uh, and his people here in this moment, particularly through the leader, Moses. This happens in, uh, in Exodus 19. So I invite you, if you have a Bible with you this morning, uh, to open up to Exodus 19. And we're going to spend a little bit of time looking at this this morning. It's a big lot of, uh, lot of scripture that we're going to be reading this morning. Uh, but this is uh, a key moment uh, in what happens in the, uh, in the uh, Israelite people at this time. This key moment has, uh, has shaped history um, because this is the moment when God gives his people the Ten Commandments. So let's read together uh, all of the chapter of Exodus 19. On the first day of the third month after the Israelites left Egypt, so just remember that's only a couple of months after they've been set free from captivity, on that very day they came to the desert of Sinai. After they set out from Rephidim, they entered the desert of Sinai, and Israel camped there in the desert in front of the mountain. Then Moses went up to God, and the Lord called to him from the mountain and said, This is what you are to say to the descendants of Jacob, and what you are to tell the people of Israel. You yourselves have seen what I did in Egypt, and how I carried you on eagles' wings, and brought you to myself. Now, if you obey me fully and keep my covenant, then out of all nations you will be my treasured possession. Although the whole, to- the whole earth is mine, you will be for me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words you are to speak to the Israelites. So Moses went back and summoned the elders of the people and set before them all the words the Lord had commanded him to speak. The people all responded together, we will do everything the Lord has said. So Moses brought their answer back to the Lord. The Lord said to Moses, I am going to come to you in a dense cloud so that the people will hear me speaking with you and will always put their trust in you. Then Moses told the Lord what the people had said. And the Lord said to Moses, go to the people and consecrate them today and tomorrow Have them wash their clothes and be ready by the third day, because on that day the Lord will come down on Mount Sinai in the sight of all the people. Put limits for the people around the mountain and tell them, be careful that you do not approach the mountain or touch the foot of it. Whoever touches the mountain is to be put to death. They are to be stoned or shot with arrows. Not a hand is to be laid on them. No personal animal shall be permitted to live. Only when the ram's horn sounds a long blast may they approach the mountain. After Moses had gone down the mountain to the people, he consecrated them and they washed their clothes. Then he said to the people, prepare yourselves for the third day. Abstain from sexual relations. On the morning of the third day, there was thunder and lightning. With a thick cloud over the mountain and a very loud trumpet blast, Everyone in the camp trembled. Then Moses led the people out of the camp to meet with God, and they stood at the foot of the mountain. Mount Sinai was covered with smoke because the Lord descended on it in fire. The smoke billowed up from it like smoke from a furnace, and the whole mountain trembled violently. As the sound of the trumpet grew louder and louder, Moses spoke and the voice of God answered him. The Lord descended descended to the top of Mount Sinai and called Moses to the top of the mountain. So Moses went up and the Lord said to him, "Go, go down and warn the people so that they do not force their way through to see the Lord and many of them perish. Even the priests who approach the Lord must consecrate themselves or the Lord will break out against them. Moses said to the Lord, the people cannot come up to Mount Sinai because you yourself have warned us, put limits around the mountain and set it apart as holy. The Lord replied, go down and bring Aaron up with you, but the priests and the people must not force their way through to come up to the Lord or he will break out against them. So Moses went down to the people and told them. Following this 
moments, following what we just saw here, between Exodus 19 and Exodus 24, we see the birth of a new covenant, a new promise that is made between God and his people, which is called the Mosaic Covenant, this promise that God between, made between Moses uh, and his people. And this promise, it includes the Ten Commandments, something that is uh, probably very well known to most of you here. These laws that were given to the Israelite people uh, about how to conduct their lives. And there were some other laws that were given during this time as well. uh, And some festivals that God was giving to his people um, to celebrate each year. And in Moses, uh, in Exodus 24, we see Moses... Um, after spending some time up with, uh, up with God in the cloud on Mount Sinai, he comes down from the mountain and the people then make a commitment together to adhere to all of the things that God wants for them. After this, after um, Exodus 24, we see Moses then go right back up the mountain uh, to be with God and following Uh, Exodus 24, then he gains some greater clarity about who God is calling them to do, uh, to be and what he is calling them to do, particularly in regards to um, building certain things like the Ark of the Covenant and the the tabernacle. Now, this moment between uh, Exodus 19 and Exodus 24 is an incredibly crucial moment for the Israelite people because the Ten Commandments are the summary of of God's moral law that he is giving to his people. And this is something that is still seen of of significance today. The Ten Commandments are uh, widely known and widely spoken uh, in many different circles in today's society. Now, the other reason that um, that this covenant is so important and so key is not just because of the laws that God was giving to his people about how to conduct their lives, but also because of the instruction that God had given to his people about how to craft the Ark of the Covenant. The Ark of the Covenant was the place um, that God would, by his Spirit, dwell with his people. His presence would be in the Ark of of the Covenant. So the instructions that God gives his people later on are um, are quite detailed about what this Ark needs to look like, this physical place in which God's presence would dwell with with his people. Now, this passage of Scripture that we've, we've just read, we're not going to be speaking about it in huge detail this morning, but this is, it is an important moment of, of Scripture because Moses alone is set aside as the person who is able to ascend to the mountain and in this cloud that is God's presence, he alone is the one who is able to go and hear from God. So reflecting on what we have just read and thinking about this season that we find ourselves into in, in right now, is this the way that, that things still operate? Is it the job of the leader? Is it my job to ascend the mountain and hear from God? And anyone else who does so is shot with arrows or stoned. <laughs> I, I, I don't think that is the, the way that, that we need to be operating anymore. Is it my job alone to ascend the mountain and tell you, This is where we are going. This is what what God has called us into because this is what God has has said to me. Now, there is truth in me needing to ascend the mountain and hear with God, to hear where he might be calling us as a church. It's important that I am the first one to ascend the mountain and hear the most where God might be calling us to be as a church. And it's true that God often does speak to his, his leaders in the church first about where he is calling them. But it is not my job solely alone to hear from God by myself where God is calling us. Because the Spirit, the presence of God doesn't any more dwell in an Ark of a Covenant. The Spirit of God dwells in you. 
We are now the temple of the Holy Spirit. God dwells in every single one of us who is a follower of Christ. There is a a principle that is the overarching principle for um, Baptist theology. And this uh, uh, this key principle um, is called the Lordship of Christ. Uh, it's not baptism, <laughs> uh, but it is the Lordship of Christ. And what this principle means, what this theological principle means, is that every single person, every single person ha- uh, who, who is a follower of Jesus has direct access to God. You don't need to hear from God just through the people who are speaking here up the front, but every single one of us is able to hear from God and we should be hearing from God. We are able to encounter God through what His Spirit does in our life and what we read in His Word. God speaks to all of us. We can hear individually what God is saying to us, but God also speaks to us collectively He is the Lord of all of us individually, and He is the Lord of us collectively. Now, because we, those who are Christ followers, are all a temple of the Holy Spirit, God is no longer calling just the leader to ascend up the mountain and hear from God. We ascend up the mountain together. We go together to meet with God. We hear together what he is saying to us. God is calling us to hear from him together. Now, my role here as your pastor of the church is to still be the first one up there. It's still my job to be the first one up the mountain. Now, are there certain things that I believe that, uh, that I have a sense that God is calling us into as a church? Yeah, there are things that I believe God is calling us into. But this journey is something that needs to happen for us as a church. We all ascend up the mountain. We find moments of confirmation and agreement in what we sense God is saying to us. And then once God has spoken to all of us, it is my role along with the church council, our governing body, to bring together what the common threads are. Where has God been been speaking to us? What are the common things of of what he has been saying? And then we move together into the future that God has for us. And what this is going to look like for our church, this season of ascending the mountain together to hear from God is centred around prayer. And uh, I believe strongly that God is calling us to, to focus on prayer once again uh, in this time in, our, in the life of our church. Um, and from August 2nd to August 22, we're going to be entering into 21 days together of prayer and fasting. 21 days of hearing from God, wanting him to speak to us so that he will... Uh, so that we will know what he is calling us into, what he is saying to our our community here. Now, there's nothing special in particular about 21 days. Uh, If you went too much longer than 21 days, there's not going to be much left of you if you're fasting for uh, for that amount of time. But this is uh, is just simply uh, an amount of time um, that we will be setting aside to, to seek God. I believe that God through this time, through August 2nd to 22nd, is not just going to be speaking to us collectively, but I also believe that as we set aside to seek his face, set aside time to seek his face, that he will speak to us individually. We will begin to hear more of his voice in our own lives. And the process of what this is going to look like specifically is you will see out in the foyer there are some cards that look like this. And we are going to be coming to, to God with a, this blank sheet, um, just saying, God, what are, you, what are you saying to us right now? This is not about us uh, putting our, our preferences or our own desires or 
uh, any kind of feedback on anything like this. But what we're going to be doing is just simply writing out together where could God be leading us. There are a whole heap of these these cards that are out there on the on the uh, on the welcome desk, and there's going to be some boxes lying around all around the church that are simply going to look like this. And um, after you have heard from God about where He might be calling us to go as His people, I just invite you to write it down and then to simply place a card in a box. Um, after we. We've done this for, for 21 days of, of prayer and fasting. The, the leaders of the church are going to come together and collate some of the information and, and find out where has God's been, been speaking to us. Uh, but this is something that we do collectively, hearing from God. As I said before, this is not about us just writing down our own bits of feedback or our own thoughts. This is what God might be saying to, uh, to any of us about where he is about where he is calling his church to go and be. Along with that, there are some guides that will be uh, that are out in the foyer right now that will uh, help us to be able to go through through this time together um, from August second to to twenty second. Uh, Julie Pope has um, has written up some devotionals for us going through the book of of Daniel uh, that we'll be able to look at through these twenty one days. Uh, there's some uh, information in this little little booklet about what fasting means, and there's going to be uh, some other things involved with this process as well. We're going to be having prayer meetings during this time where we will come together and, uh, and inviting God to, to speak to us as a, as a group um, and, and to finish our time together over these 21 days. We're going to have a couple of special prayer events. We're going to have a, a 24-hour prayer meeting where we're just going to be continually praying for, for 24 hours, wanting to hear from God through that time. That's going to be on uh, the 21st of August until the 22nd of August. Now, um, now you'll need to give me grace on the 22nd of August. I'm going to be a very tired guy when I preach that morning, but uh, I'm still excited about what God's going to, going to say to us uh, during that, that time. And to finish this, this period of, of prayer and fasting, hearing from God, um, we're going to, to have a prayer service on the final, final Sunday night. Um, a prayer celebration, really, uh, celebrating what God has been, uh, been doing. There is both prayer involved in this, in this time uh, that we'll be taking part in, but there's also going to be fasting. Now, for some of you here today, you may not have spent much time fasting. Um, so why do we fast? Fasting simply deepens our hunger for God. It makes us yearn for him more, more desperate for him because we set aside time, this time when we would usually be spending eating or doing something else and it increases our dependency on him. God, he speaks to us when we when we fast. Now, fasting can be from, from anything. You may choose to fast from food. You may choose to fast from social media. You may choose to fast from a whole range of, of different things. Um, but when we fast, God does speak to us. And I'm not encouraging any of you to, uh, to, to be a hero during this time. If you've been eating um, sizzler and burgers for a uh, for a month straight, it's probably not the best idea to then suddenly stop uh, and go cold turkey for, for 21 days. Um, but there is some information in this, uh, in this guide that will give you more information about what, what fasting is able to, to look like. This process is, is, not, just, um, is not just about trying to, to understand what God might be, be saying to us. But it is about seeking him and, uh, and wanting to know him more, becoming more desperate for his presence in our lives. It's about us ascending the mountain together as his people, setting aside our own preferences and wants and discovering the heart of God. Now, between Exodus 19 to 24, 
Um, we, uh, we, we see what, uh, what Moses has, has done, and this is the, the process that really he is going through. He ascends up the mountain to, to hear from God and, uh, and to know what he is saying to his people. But then Moses comes down the mountain and tells the people about all the ways that God has spoken. And the people's response in Exodus 24 verse 3 is... After God has spoken, they respond with these words, that everything the Lord has said, we will do. They make a commitment collectively to stand together and pursue what God has called them into. But following this, following this promise that the, the people of God have made together, um, then Moses ascends back up the mountain, and as I've spoken about already, the, he's given more clarity about what this is going to look like practically for the people of God. Moses is up there this second time around for 40 days and nights, and in Exodus 32, um, Moses comes back down the mountain. But this time, when he comes down the mountain from Exodus th- uh, in Exodus 32, he, found, he finds that the people have become impatient with God. He has been taking too long to speak to Moses. In Exodus 32, verse 1, when the people saw that Moses was so long in coming down from the mountain, they gathered around Aaron and said, Come! Make us gods who will go before us. It's only a few months earlier that the, this group of people had been set free from slavery by their God. And suddenly they become impatient with him and decide we will create gods for ourselves. Our ideas and our ways of doing things are far better than God's ways of, of doing things. It is only 40 days earlier after deciding to create gods for themselves that they had said, everything the Lord has said, we will do. After standing together as a nation, making a commitment as his people, saying that they will pursue what God has called them into, they become impatient and they feel like God is taking too long. Going through this process of prayer and, and fasting, and, uh, and then it's going to be a lot of time of discernment after that as well to really understand what God's calling us into. This is not something that happens overnight. This is not something that will happen quickly. But we can't fall into the same trap that the Israelites did here, where they decided that they would take things into their own hands and think that they had better ideas about what they could do rather than what God was calling them to do. God is calling us to make that commitment together that we see in Exodus 24, verse 3, that everything that God will say, we will do, and then to be faithful to what God has called us to. We can't get impatient. (laughs) We can't try to anticipate what God might be saying. We need to wait on him and say that everything that God will say, we will do. Next week, we're going to be going one more more level down. We're going to be seeing what what this could um, evolve like as a a church. What are the the specific things of um, of what we're trying to understand that God uh, is saying to us? Um, But I do invite all of you, even before... Uh, Monday next week when we begin this process, I invite you to start um, increasing your your prayer life, to start um, asking this question already. Um, God, what are you saying to us? What are you saying to to myself personally? What are the the things that you might be be calling me into? But what is he saying to to us as, uh, as his people?